Welcome to part three of the book of Jane. Today, now right at this moment, I am going to read to you the section Intuition versus Institution. And it's impossible for me to apologize, to apologize for presenting my writing in a standard patriarchal format <clears throat> because I refuse to drip my thoughts in footnotes in order to legitimize them. They are intuitively received. Language and communication through words and imagery is my existence. I know that I can never receive any acknowledgement in my lifetime for my work on any significant scale, for the system is set up to deny me a platform, which is why I'm here. The system in existence today would have me in one of the various feminist ways one can body surf for a while, but I will not be a wave crashing to the shore. I am a body of water that quenches the thirst of collective women globally who understand the overarching picture of supreme male rule and its destruction to our planet. So quickly would the average person jump to the conclusion that to be anti-male rule is to be anti-male. It's not the case at all. Patriarchy is hurting as many men as it does women and children. The source of all our grief can be found in the power-driven governing bodies worldwide as they put the world up for sale and destroy the rest with war and pollution. I posit that if there were gender balance, first and foremost in global govern governance, then there would be balance in total. So this book is not about hating men or overrating women. It is about balance and harmony on earth. Read it that way, please, when you get it. If you do get it, it is available online on my website, evershed.com. It's not about liberal or right-wing. It's not about Christian or atheist or any other duality. It is about learning to enjoy the fruits of the earth with reverence and love. This book does not seek to overrule the importance of equal cultural representation compared to gender balance. It seeks to incorporate them as a matter of course. I, and as I am immersed in alternative news and news, mostly it's focused on the details of global male escapades causing mayhem all over the world. And it's delivered by news anchors who are mostly henchmen for a fascist agenda that pays them handily for disseminating their propaganda. What is the use of knowing all these details of global male antics on a minute-by-minute -minute breaking news blogosphere basis if it does nothing to change anything? The women's seat at the table of global consequence still sits empty. It has been proven that just 33% female representation on any governing body sways the budget toward humanitarian aspects of rule, such as health and education. Women also tend to take the budget pie out of the oven before corrupt politicians burn it up by allotting over half the entire budget toward the military, thereby drenching our hands in the blood of unending wars. And as we've seen, one war needs to, leads to the next and the next and the next. And pretty soon we're saying, you know, like Derek Jensen does, we are in Iraq. He, he questions that. No, we are not in Iraq. The United States military is in Iraq. And we didn't really have anything at all to do with being in Iraq, we had no say. Looks like these glasses are broken. Oh well. Just gonna carry on with my crooked glasses. <laughs> a new standard is waiting in the wings. As all news is caught in a catch twenty sto catch twenty two story of problems with no solutions. We want to be informed, yes, we need to know what is going on in our world. But it is almost exclusively about what men are doing and saying and having gorgeous women deliver their stories on TV as if they represented the concurrence of all women, which seems to be most subliminally, subliminally effective. The jig is up. And we need men with, the, with, with those voices to align with the empowerment of women, 
to address this issue as an introduction to every global crisis story, every local rape, every drive-by shooting. The day of the authoritarian male needs to end before they actually take over space too, the consequences of which are devastating to all species. Will we be being dive-bombed with weapons and infiltrations of all types forever after, once they've taken over space? We are already dealing with major natural disasters as a consequence of global economy, almost exclusively shaped by the men who run it. While empowering women must also be careful that they do not end up being the ones to clean up the mess that has been made in the global bachelor pad. You know, patriarchy needs to take responsibility for, for all the mess that it has made. You know, why can't we just turn the military into an earth cleanup task force? Doesn't that make sense? Most people want peace. Billions of people want peace. Only a very few people want war. And most people are good-hearted humans. And if anything, it's the money system that makes them do what they do that's irreverent or illegal or corrupt. If we didn't have a money system, we had an alternative to a monetary system. Just think how we would live our lives so much more creatively. So I would like to see parity replace patriarchy. We need the balance of men and women across all cultures working together to solve the problems. And gender inequity with a bias favoring males is systematic throughout the world. From health issues, education standards, pay, women get the short end of the stick. And the saying, rule of thumb, comes from the diameter of the size of the stick that a man was allowed to beat his wife with. If women were indeed seated at the table of global consequence, I can assure you, that the trafficking of women, which has reached epidemic proportions, would soon be outlawed. The world has too many child soldiers. Half of them are female. I mean, imagine these kids growing up. It's irreparable damage to their life to be a, ch a, a soldier as a child and know that you've killed people. A child's life is sacred, and it's an, a nightmare to know that they are given the means to kill by a patriarchal system addicted to war to maintain itself, no matter that it require innocence to propel it ever forward. So there's a picture of Earth rebirth, a woman rebirthing the world. Maybe I'll just show you one or two other pictures. Um, this is called glorification of the organic. And Mary Magdalene, I'll read you this poem, Mary Magdalene. O oh Mary, wherefore art thou? Your presence has been censored for too long. O oh Mary, once again sing us your song, those praises of this earth, the glory of rebirth, where women are once again blessed in the eyes of men. So once again, thank you for listening. Sorry about my funky glasses and everything, but that's just a minor detail to saving the planet. Hope you'll come back and get the next edition coming soon. Bye.